Your favorite food might be out of stock next year. Are you prepared? All right, fellow preppers, let's huddle up and talk shop. Now I've been monitoring the trends, connecting the dots, and diving deep into the world of supply chains. And guess what? There's a storm brewing. And you know how we always talk about being a step ahead and prepared for whatever curveballs life or the world might throw at us? Well, I've got some insider info that I think you'll find valuable. It's looking like 2024 is gearing up to be one of those years where certain grocery items might be a tad bit harder to come by. I've been chatting with some supply chain folks and keeping an eye on trends, and here's what I've gathered. Number 10. Wheat. As one of the primary staples, wheat plays a pivotal role in the American diet, serving as the foundation for bread, pasta, cereals, and many processed foods. The U.S. Midwest, often termed the breadbasket, has been experiencing increasingly erratic weather patterns, from droughts to unseasonal cold snaps. These events have led to substantial reductions in yield quality and quantity. John, a wheat farmer from Kansas, described the challenging scenario. This year's yield was one of the lowest we've had in decades. If this continues, I'm not sure how we'll cope. With wheat in short supply, American households may soon find their grocery bills rising, especially for bread and other wheat-based products. Number nine, beef. All right, fellow prepper and meat lover, Let's get down to the nitty-gritty about what's going on with our beloved beef. Now, beef is no joke in the U.S. We love our burgers, steaks, and briskets. And with the average Joe chowing down on a whopping 56 pounds of beef every year, it's clear beef's got a special place in our hearts. And stomachs. But things have been rocky lately, and I'm not just talking about the steak on your plate. See, the places where cows like to graze and chew their cud, spots like Texas and Oklahoma, have been dry as a bone. Those long stretches without rain are more than just a weather report. They've been spelling out some real problems for our beef supply. With pastures turning brown and feed getting scarce, ranchers are in a tight spot. Many have had to make the tough call to shrink their herds. But wait, there's more. As if Mother Nature's curveballs weren't enough, we've also had to deal with illnesses hitting the cattle. And don't even get me started on the hiccups at processing plants. It's like a series of unfortunate events for the beef world. Robert, a buddy of mine from Big Sky Country, that's Montana for those not in the know, painted a bleak picture when he told me, it's been an uphill battle. The costs of raising cattle are going up and the returns are uncertain. Now, I don't know about you, but I sure do enjoy a good BBQ. So this whole situation's got me thinking about what's next. For all of us steak enthusiasts, the days of affordable prime cuts might be numbered. But on the bright side, this could be a golden opportunity to venture into new culinary territories. Ever thought about bison, venison, or even plant-based options? Just saying, diversifying the menu might be the way to go. Number 8. Dairy. Dairy is a significant component of the American diet, with products ranging from milk to yogurt to cheese being consumed daily. However, the dairy industry is grappling with multiple challenges. The fluctuating climate has impacted the quality of feed available for dairy cows, affecting milk yields. Furthermore, labor shortages in some parts of the U.S. have made dairy farming less efficient. Lisa, who runs a dairy farm in Wisconsin, voiced her concerns, Every day is unpredictable. While the demand remains high, our ability to meet that demand is constantly challenged. This might mean that Americans could soon be paying more for their morning milk or favorite yogurt brands. Number 7. Apples. Often regarded as a quintessential American fruit, apples are a staple in many households, with the U.S. being the second largest producer globally. However, apple orchards in key producing states like Washington, New York, and Michigan have been impacted by unexpected frost events during the blooming season and prolonged drought conditions. These factors reduce yield and potentially affect the quality of the fruit. Sarah, an apple farmer from Washington State, mentioned... We've had to put in extra effort and resources to protect our orchards, but it's still been a tough year. Apple pies, ciders, and even the fresh fruit may become pricier as supplies dwindle. Number 6. Soybeans. Now, I'm sure you've heard of them, but do you know just how much these little beans impact our daily lives? You see, soybeans aren't just for health enthusiasts sipping on soy milk or enjoying a tofu stir-fry. No siree! These beans are hard at work across the board. Livestock? They munch on soybean-based feeds. Your favorite snacks and baked goods? Chances are there's some form of soy in there. They're the unsung heroes of our food chain. But much like their agricultural siblings, 
Soybeans have been facing a heap of challenges. The Midwest, where most of these beans grow, has been on a roller coaster ride of wild weather. One moment, fields are underwater from unexpected floods, and the next, they're parched due to scorching droughts. Farming's always had its uncertainties, but lately, it feels like someone cranked up the unpredictability dial to 11. I caught up with Mark, a dedicated soybean farmer from Illinois, over a cup of joe recently. The concern in his eyes was unmistakable. Each season has become a gamble, he shared, shaking his head. We're never sure what to expect. And coming from a guy who's been in the farming game for years, that's saying something. Here's the kicker. The ripples from a bumpy soybean season aren't just going to be felt on the farm. These beans are intertwined in so many aspects of our economy that a shakeup in their production could send shockwaves throughout. Whether it's the cost of your morning cereal or the price tag on your favorite snack, a soybean hiccup could be felt in all corners of the grocery store. Number five, potatoes, those glorious starchy tubers. Who doesn't have a soft spot for some crispy French fries or creamy mashed potatoes? They're a staple, right? But here's the rub. Those main potato hotspots, places like Idaho and Washington, are getting thirstier by the day. Yep, with less rainfall and those snowpacks not filling up like they used to, water's becoming scarcer than hen's teeth. And that's bad news for our potato buddies. They need that water to grow big and tasty. Brenda, a hardworking farmer from Idaho, was pretty bummed when she told me, we're seeing smaller potatoes and the overall yield is down compared to previous years. So... Next time you're craving some loaded potato skins or a big bag of chips, be ready for a possible dent in your pocket or even some empty spots on those store shelves. Number four, rice. While most folks might associate rice with sushi or a side dish at their favorite Asian restaurant, here in the U.S., rice is big business. States like Arkansas, California, and Louisiana, they're the heavy hitters in the rice game. But even these pros are having a tough time. Between dwindling water sources and some pretty antiquated water infrastructure, growing rice is becoming a nail-biter. Carlos, a passionate rice farmer from California with roots going back three generations, shared with me, water is the lifeblood of rice farming. With these shortages, it's becoming increasingly difficult to predict our output. And let's be real, rice isn't just the base for your favorite curry, it's a staple on countless American tables. So if the rice production takes a hit, it ain't just sushi lovers who'll feel the pinch. Number three, poultry. So, chickens. Most folks don't think twice about grabbing a pack of chicken breasts from the store. But lately, it ain't that simple. You see, our feathered friends have been having a rough time. Corn and soybeans, the main components in their feed, have been running scarce. Why? Well, the issues around corn and soybean supplies are enough to keep a seasoned prepper up at night. And just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, the avian flu hit. It's like Mother Nature's throwing curveballs at the poultry industry. Plus, if you throw in the disruptions at processing plants, it's turning into one wild ride. Angela, a buddy of mine down in Georgia who runs her own poultry farm, told me, between the rising costs of feed and the challenges in processing, it's been a perfect storm. What does that mean for folks like you and me? Next time we're craving some fried chicken or wings for the game, we might have to dig a bit deeper into our wallets. Number two, peanuts. Who doesn't love a good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich or snacking on some peanuts during a ball game? Peanuts are as American as apple pie, but dang, they're also facing a heap of challenges. Most of our peanut farms are down south, places like Georgia and Texas, but lately the weather's been acting all kinds of unpredictable. Too much rain when it's time to harvest? That's a recipe for moldy peanuts. And let me tell you, mold is no good for anyone. But on the flip side, when it's dry for too long, those peanut plants are left thirsty. And the yields? They plummet. Mike, a good old boy from Texas who's been farming peanuts for years, told me, the unpredictability of the weather makes it hard to have a consistent good harvest year after year. So, fellow peanut butter lovers, next time you reach for that jar or your favorite peanut snack, don't be surprised if the price tag's a bit steeper or the shelves are a tad emptier. Number one, corn. Corn is pretty much the backbone of America's farmland. Think about it. It's not just those golden kernels we enjoy on the cob. Livestock munch on it as feed. We turn it into biofuel to power vehicles. Heck, you'd be hard-pressed to find an industry that doesn't in some way link back to this mighty grain. Now, here's where things get hairy. The Midwest, which we lovingly call the Corn Belt, 
has been hit with a whirlwind of issues. We're seeing critters that shouldn't be there munching on crops, and then there's the wild weather. One moment it's dry as a desert, and the next, an unexpected cold snap rolls in. Farmers are pretty used to dealing with the unpredictable, but lately, it feels like someone threw the rule book out the window. I recently had a heart-to-heart -heart with Kevin, a stand-up guy from Iowa who's been farming corn longer than most of us have been around. He's seen ups and downs, but this, it's different. He shared with me, corn is more than just a crop for us. It's a legacy. The current conditions have made every planting season a gamble, and it's taking a toll on our community. Now, when a seasoned farmer like Kevin starts raising flags, you know it's time to sit up and pay attention. The ripples from a shaky corn harvest? Oh, they'll spread far and wide. From the steak on your grill to the fuel in your truck, corn plays a hand in it. And if corn production stumbles, well, you can bet the effects will cascade through our economy. Everything from the price of your morning cereal to your drive to work could see a change. And that wraps up our list for today. But here's the thing. Knowledge is power. And being informed is the first step to being prepared. With the impending food shortages, it's crucial to be proactive and consider diversifying our pantries and being resourceful with what we have. If you found this video valuable, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button for more insights from Finance Daily. If you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up. And hey, we're curious. In the comments below, let us know what foods you're currently stockpiling and any steps you're taking to be prepared for the food shortages. Your insights might help someone else out there. A huge thanks to all of you for tuning in. Remember, stay informed, stay prepared, and most importantly, take care of each other. Until next time.